With Hashem's loving grace, welcome to Parsha Pearls. This week's Torah portion is Parsha Shmos. We have a nice story for the Shabbos table for you. It's about Rabbi Tzvi Ali Melech of Dinov, the Bnei Sachar, that this week was his yurt site. Well, the Bnei Sachar had fallen ill and was on his deathbed and looked like he didn't have much time left. So his closest Talmidim, his closest disciples, together with his children, his grandchildren, they gathered around the bed to see if the Rebbe would have some type of final instruction for them. Well, the Rebbe's eyes were closed and his face had an aura mixed of trepidation, ecstasy, as if he was ready, preparing himself to meet his maker intimately. And the students, they thought, maybe this is really selfish of us, expecting that at such a moment, such a holy moment, such a sank moment, that the Rebbe should have a special message for us. And suddenly the Rebbe's eyes opened and he scanned the small group in the room and he looked in a corner and it was a peasant standing in the corner. And he said to the peasant, he said, Rebbe Shmuel, come close, come close. So the people looked around, who's this Rebbe Shmuel? And he said, a simple peasant. And nobody had ever seen him before. And uh, the Hasidim ushered him close to the bed, to the Rebbe's bed. And it, the Rebbe said to him, took a deep breath and said, Rebbe Shmuel, what would you like to ask me? And the Hasid thought, he thought, how did he got here? He came to Dinov just to ask the Rebbe a question. He didn't expect to find the Rebbe in this circumstances, but he saw all these people walking at the Rebbe's house and he followed them too. But he saw the Rebbe in this circumstance, but he still, he had this question he had to ask the Rebbe. He says, Rebbe, what do I do with all the wool I bought? So the Rebbe says, wait, don't worry about the falling wool price. Wait till next winter. The price of wool is going to double and triple and you're going to make a lot of money. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Everything will be okay and you won't lack income. And when the Rebbe told him what to do, just to be patient and to wait, and he's going to make a lot of money, the Rebbe then closed his eyes and his soul ascended to the heavens. Well, for the next days during the Shiva, the Hasidim, they were debating, what was this? Maybe this is at least one of the 36 hidden Sadiqim. Who was this Rebbe Shmuel that nobody ever said, dressed up like a peasant or a simple wool merchant? And they thought maybe... Maybe it was Elijah the prophet, the Leo and the v, and they were arguing back and forth. And what's the inner meaning of wool? What does wool symbolize in Kabbalah? And what's the prophet symbolize in Kabbalah? And what was the Rebbe saying by wait till next winter? Maybe you think the Mashiach is coming. Well, they made all kinds of conjecture and arguing back and forth. Well, the Rebbe's son, Rabbi Tzvi Elimelech's son, Duvid, he heard the Hasidim arguing during the Shiva, during the, the days of the Shiva. And he called them and he said, uh, I'm sorry, you're mistaken. He said, what do you mean we're mistaken? He says, that wasn't Elijah the prophet. That wasn't one of the 36 hidden Sadiqim. That was a simple wool merchant that the Rebbe knew. You didn't know him. You weren't acquainted. He didn't live in Dinov. When the Rebbe would travel in the countryside, he'd go past it. He'd bless this peasant. This peasant was very attached to the Rebbe. Okay. And the Rebbe gave him a simple blessing. He just, he bought the, this wool and after he bought the wool, then the wool price fell and he didn't know what to do. So he came to Dinov to ask my father, ask the Rebbe. Okay. And we see at the closing moments of his time on earth, one would think that somebody, the, the Bnei Sachar, Reb Tzvi of Dinov, he's one of the greatest Hasidic Kabbalists that ever lived. In his famous book, the Bnei Sachar, the secrets of creation, it's a, really lofty, lofty writings. But at the last moment, he did everything. He went away from his lofty thoughts just to help and direct his attention at a simple human being, showing that the Rebbe had his love of every simple human being. And this is what it means to be a great person, a great leader in Israel. We can now understand, that's a question on this week's Torah portion. Moses, he's the heir to the throne. He's the adopted prince of Egypt, the Pharaoh's adopted son. Moses is going to be the next Pharaoh, but Moses, he's got this wonderful future, quote unquote, wonderful future, and, and it's, he's going to be the leader of the world's greatest country. He lives in the palace. He's got all the money he wants. He's got everything he could dream of, and Moses throws away his whole future to help a Jew who's being oppressed by an Egyptian taskmaster, and with one fell swoop, one, one punch, it, 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 Moses disposed of him. 
And then he had to go into exile. He had to flee Egypt. He had to go into exile in the desert. And Moses spent 60 years of exile in the desert. This is willing. This is the this is great. These are the greatest of our, our true leaders in Israel. Willing to give up his own personal convenience, his own personal advantage to help one simple Jew. In the case of Moses, one slave. Moses, he could have stayed in his comfort zone. He didn't have to do that, but he did. Because as a true leader and as a true man of Hashem, he couldn't stand to see one, one case of injustice. And the last thing he had on his mind was his own personal benefit, his own vested interest. How opposite that is of leaders, quote unquote, leaders today. And we dream to have a leader like Moses, or Mashiach Tzidkenu. We need Mashiach now. Speed in our days. Amen. Have a wonderful Shabbos and all your heart's wishes for the best. God bless.